Hello, hello, hello. Happy, happy Monday. My name is Monica Henderson, and as usual, it is a beautiful Monday morning, which means it is time for us to get started with Mink Life Motivation Live. So super excited to be here with you again, uh, because if you're watching this video, then that means you made it through another week, and I am so excited uh, to get started to see what's happening this week. So welcome to Mink Life Motivation Live. And here at Mink Life Motivation, our mission is to help you with your personal business brand and network development. And we do that by each week on the show by helping you get motivated, stay inspired, keep networking and gain knowledge so that you can live a life that is designed by you, for you. And that life must be healthy, wealthy, and fulfilled. With that, I am so excited to dive into this week on live, building a tribe to support your authentic self. Now, the people that we're gonna be talking about this with um, are going to help us understand a little bit deeper about why choosing your tribe is so important in business. And with mm -hmm. that, it is time for us to calibrate your life. To help me calibrate your life, we're going to get motivated with some of my favorite people on the planet, the first of which is Andrea Gewertz, and she is the Wellness Thrive Strategist at Wellbeing and Worth. She is a Mink Life Motivation Master Trainer and also the Dean of Mink Life University. Andrea, hey girl, how you doing? I'm great. Glad to be here. And... Uh, to also help us craft this conversation and to get us motivated, we have the owner and photographer at Headshots by Peggy, vlogger, dynamic speaker at Next Global Virtual Conference. This is my other co-host, my other bestie, Peggy Warney. Hey, good to be here. And last but not least, we have a very special guest with us today. Uh, he is the founder of, Divine, of, of Define Your Vision. Uh, he has traveled over to visit it over 49 countries worldwide. And he is the dynamic speaker at the next global virtual conference. Lee Hicks, join us to have this conversation today. How you doing, my brother? I am absolutely <laughs> loving life, Monica. It's a good evening, good afternoon to you guys over there. We're just, the sun's just coming up here in Australia. That's right. That's yeah. tomorrow. So, <laughs> you were like, March 1st. I'm like, it's yep. March 2nd in Australia. We're so. in tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, he's in our future. Uh, so uh, apparently the future is looking bright. And so that's exciting. Um, but this is Lee's first time on the show. So thank you, Lee, for coming and hanging out with us today. We always love bringing in male energy uh, to kind of mix with all of this fem uh, femininity happening here. Um, and I, I'm excited to kind of dive into the topic. So are you guys ready to kind of dive into some of the questions that we're going to answer today? Yep. Perfect. Yep. All right. So the very next question uh, that we have is, how is giving and receiving support from your tribe a expression of of your authentic self so how is the tribe of it all creating the tribe supporting the tribe getting love from that tribe such an important part of the self-expression uh, so with that uh, i will i won't put lee on the spot first this time i will we'll give you a little grace uh, but andrea would you like to kind of start us off with this conversation of course I do. This is one of my favorite topics in life, like building community, having community, building a tribe, whether you ascribe to the word tribe or not, let's just say community, you know, I've had heated conversations with people, even just using that word. But I think what we mean here, and so everyone know that we, we have discussed tribe, the use of the word at Mink Life, by the way, um, is the fact that it's all, a, life is all about being community with other humans, right? And so um, I really love the concept of doing it. Like in the act of being a nurturer and receiving nourishment from others is the act of building a community. And so how is that a form of self-expression? Um, well, how you extend outside of yourself also leads into how you're gonna receive things from other people too. So it's in that, shall I say metaphysical, I feel kind of nervous saying metaphysical around Lee, uh, making sure I use it right. Uh, <laughs> but 
but I, I really do mean that that energy of being a community and sharing things with each other, bouncing ideas off of them. We're a community. We're a very dynamic community that's reaching out to other things and other people and other places because we're so insatiably, I am, curious about the other, right? And that just makes me a more well-rounded human because I take in that knowledge from others to make myself more informed and a more of a light inside of whatever communities I serve. So I I love this topic. I'm talking about it a lot with my teams of different people. And I just think the interconnectedness of, of us all makes us a tribe of a global sense because we have Lee here on the other side of the world. Um, but also because it's just wonderful. I mean, I try to look on the bright side. What did COVID do? And COVID connected me to many more people because I leapt in, we all did, into this meeting place that is virtual, which now seems just as, like I said, the VRL, the virtual real life, is a big part of all of our connections these days. So bring it, come visit us. We love everyone visiting oh. us in the VRL, right? <laughs> yeah. So. so we have to make sure it goes on record that uh, that was Andrea's coining of the VRL, the virtual real life. I we have to make sure on the record that that is her 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 intellectual property there that we're all going to be using because it's so true right we have built so much tribe in this virtual space um and or historically we would have done it very locally to where we lived and we would have run into people in our neighborhoods but now with coronavirus and the original social distancing and now it's just kind of like you know just six feet apart ish uh <laughs> we're no longer kind of separated um and but in some ways it has made us so much closer so thank you so much. Lee, did you want to chime in on what Andrea was saying? Yeah, um, it's funny, you know, with the question that that's been posed, I almost kind of want to flip it a little bit because everything that I'm about and, and it's um, it just, sorry, the, the thought that was on my mind is that in order to attract our tribe, we have to know who we are. And when we do that and we really chime into our values and we really concentrate on that, I think in my observation, so many people skip through life and they don't actually stop and ask themselves the question, who am I? And so they're living these other people's lives. And I feel like that when we do that and then we drop in and we realise and ask the questions, what are my values? What makes my heart sing? What are my strengths? What do I love to do? What lights me up? And then start creating a vision in accordance with those values and strengths and loves. Then we can begin to formulate an idea of what our tribe looks like. Because essentially our tribe, in my opinion, if you're in alignment with it, are just a mirror image of yourself. And that's when you know that you're in flow. Because then all of a sudden you start attracting these incredible people like, like you are amazing ladies here. Like, We've attracted each other into our own networks. You know what I mean? And, and um, like Andrea was saying, through, you know, metaphysics and literally through vibrational frequency, because we are all vibrating on a high frequency and we have attracted each other. And so that's, that's the, that, yeah, I think that's the way that I would, I, I choose to look at it from that point of view. Oh, I like that. Of course, mm. it does start with oh, so. Yeah. So <laughs> I skimmed all over there. Well, <laughs> Yeah. So what's <laughs> hilarious about that, I got goosebumps about it, is because so in the principles program, right, um, we start with self, we end with tribe, right? And the reason why we start with self is like you were saying, you have to first know what who you are and what your needs are to give and receive before you can even connect it to who other who other people are and what how they want to receive and give, right? And so uh, it so directly is a part of our intrinsic conversation that we have at Mink Life Motivation in general that you just kind of like, you bookend it exactly the way that we would have normally talked about it anyway. So thank you, Lee, for <laughs> being so on point with that. Uh, Peggy, did you, uh, you always have something to add, so I'm excited I to hear. always what have something to add. Well, um, I was gonna say that um, the reason that it is important is because people like water attract things on their, their same level. And that's exactly what Lee said. I used to be the type of person, I didn't have a, a strong family as far as biological, you know, 
nurturing, things like that growing up. So I, for a long time, was that person that was like, I don't need anybody. I can do it myself. I can do it myself. I don't need anybody. And I realized that um, not only was I hurting the things that I could be accomplishing, but I was hurting myself by not letting the, the, the tribe strengthen me because we are, you know, we're, we're, we're people that, you know, we need each other, you know, just like a one stick can be broken easily, but a bundle of stick can't be, can't be broken as easily. So we need each other. But the main thing is to know that you have to work on you first. If you're like, man, everybody I hang around with or, you know, blah, blah, blah. Well, it's time to look in the mirror because maybe you are attracting things that you don't want to deal with or you don't want to admit about yourself. So that's, that's a really, I like that. Um, this, I think we're all kind of saying the same thing here. It's, it all comes oh, yeah. down to self-work and then, and then having the, having the, um, the ability to allow your tribe in and, and really bond with them. Yeah, I, I I would agree with that. That whole, I, first of all, I've never heard the the multiple sticks analogy. That is brilliant. So I will be borrowing that and using that in other things that I do. Um, but the the reality is, right? Um, you are the common denominator in your life. Period. Right. Period. Like you are the common denominator. The reason why all the things are existence in your space is because of you. And so before I got so eloquent about not telling people about themselves. Um, <laughs> I used to say, when people would be like, ah, everybody is so, you know, all these people out here are crooked or all these people out here, they're just out to get, just out to get you and this, that or the other. And I'm like, I never have that problem. That is never my problem. Clearly you're the common denominator. So maybe it's you. Now that's not a very nice way to talk to people. And so I don't use that anymore. <laughs> However, there is some truth to that statement, right? If you're finding that what you are attracting in relationship, what you are attracting in friendships, what you are attracting in other spaces around you, they all seem to treat you a certain way or you seem to have the, the same experiences over and over again. It's not them. It has to be you. And it might be you're not creating your own boundaries. It may be not, you're not asking for the kind of support that you're looking for. It may be that you are um, just not being in your authenticity. And so, because you're not in your authenticity, you're attracting other people who are also not in their authenticity and everybody's pretending to be friends and everybody's pretending to be supportive because those people are attracted to other people. But when you get real, when you get real with yourself and you get around real people, you cannot stay fake. It is impossible. <laughs> and so, um, the, or you won't stay, right? And so, you know, creating your tribe is really about this delicate ecosystem of you staying true to yourself and authentic to yourself and in, in, in your own truth and allowing others to do the same in their space, right? And that is really kind of my like surmising of kind of like, the giving and taking in the space of, of tribe, right? It really does require everybody to have the space and opportunity to, to grow into their most authentic selves. Uh, so as I am talking about most authentic selves, I this next segment, which is one of my favorite segments of the show, is called um, our entrepreneur's journey. And this section is all about how our guests do such a fantastic job of keeping us inspired with their own stories and coming into it. And when I talk about authenticity, I want you to know that Lee Hicks is one of the most genuine people I have met. Um, he is one of my newer friends and that we've just gotten really close over the last couple of months. Um, but he is like my brother down in Australia. And I, I know y'all keep saying like, dang, her and these Aussies, but I'm telling you, uh, Australia has some heavy hitters down there. And uh, Lee is one of them. Um, we bonded on a instantaneous level when we had to one-to-one, -to -one. Uh, but he is the founder of Define Your Vision. Uh, he sailed all over the world uh, in, and visited 49 countries. And then he became the youngest 
super yacht captain. And, I, and I'm, at some point, we're going to have to have more conversation about that. But Lee, please share us your journey to entrepreneurship uh, with the audience, because we would love to hear how you became the founder of Define Your Vision. Sure. Thank you, Monica. Yeah. So it started for me like at a young age when I was, uh, my father started an incredible business and my father is an incredible, incredible man. And he started a business and it started out as a family business. And I worked for him right through my high school years. And I had an expectation on myself that I was supposed to stay there and to work the business. And then one day, just randomly, I, it was vivid. I literally pulled out my phone and I called my best friend. And I said, we're leaving. And with that, within a couple of months, I, I bought a caravan. We started randomly traveling. There was a lot of people that are like, what are you doing? You're crazy, Lee. What, what's going on? You know, like you've got this opportunity that you could stay, but I just, I had to go. Um, we didn't have a plan. I ended up going up, working on boats and doing some pearl diving up in the Northwest. Once again, there was a lot of resistance from mom. It's like, that's a dangerous job. We were spending five hours a day underwater. And, you know, um, then I, all of a sudden, I just decided one day I want, like, I want to just travel overseas. So I wrote um, uh, out to all the yacht clubs around Australia. And long story short, I ended up on a sailboat sailing across the South Pacific, delivering a sailboat to Florida. Um, and once again, people were like, there was a lot of people that around me that were kind of like, you know, what are you doing? That's crazy. Like I didn't have any money at the time. I was sort of hitchhiking around the islands barefoot with a backpack and just, but it was one of the most amazing experiences. Like nothing will ever touch that experience in, in my whole life that time. Then I ended up getting a job on um, Ivana Trump's super yacht. So just to clarify, the super yachts are the great, big, most luxurious boats in the world. Some of them, they're up to two, 300 foot now. Um, and I got a job on Ivana Trump's boat. That took me across the Atlantic. And then we ended up at the Monaco Grand Prix and the Cannes Film Festival and all through the French Riviera and Greece and the whole lot. And I ended up uh, sailing around the world for 10 years, visiting 49 countries, became one of the, the most qualified super yacht captains in the industry at a very young age. And it was hard to get respect, even though I'd done 42,000 nautical miles and invested a lot of money in my, my courses in, in, to do that. But there was a lot of resistance from people, like people would come to the, the aft end of the boat. I distinctly remember a basketball star, um, NBA, uh, an NBA star coming and asking for the captain. I'm like, you're speaking to him though, asking for permission to come on the boat. And they're like, no, 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 really. And I'm like, no, if you really want to step on the boat, you, you, you're speaking to him. And so there was just always this resistance. And I've just kind of found, found that sort of thing. One day I ended up, I, um, I wanted to, I just had enough of boats. So I just bought 12 acres of rainforest here in Australia, literally dropped 12 big trees, milled them all, cut them all the joists and bearers and made cut lists and, and did all the uh, plumbing and the electrical stuff and the whole lot. And, and, you know, there was people around me going, what you're doing is too big. Like, what are you doing, Lee? This is crazy. But I loved it. I just loved it. And in my mind, it was easy. Reality was a different story. And the universe would throw in plenty of challenges on the way. Um, then I got to a point where I was um, with an amazing woman. She had stage four metastasized breast cancer. And she got really sick. And the universe just kind of clamped down on me. And it just like I had squatters in the house. I was renting my house out and they were squatting. We couldn't get them out. I had a knee operation. She was really sick. And I basically got to a point where I just, I sold everything that we owned. I sold the lot, the property. I had all the, I had four cars, boats, three motorbikes, trailers, a landscaping business, like the whole lot. And I just sold the whole lot and I went to Mexico and everyone's like, what are you doing? Um, and so what the defining moment for me came when I, I started to build up a couple of marketing companies and build big teams. And I sort of realized that what I was doing was, um, it, wasn't, it wasn't me. I was selling someone else's products and someone else's dream and someone else's values. And I'm like, but I've got more inside me. I'd invested you know, close to $100,000 in my personal development. And I had all this knowledge and I wanted to share that. That's I'm, one of my core values is obviously freedom. And another one is to empower and educate people. 
And so I started designing this life and it was a defining moment in Bali about a year and a half ago. I was living in Bali and I was at a mastermind and I just realized that I'm a visionary. My, I am a visionary. And I looked and I observed that a lot of the people that were around me and they were letting the other people's opinions drown out what they wanted to do and they were living their life in accordance with other people's values. And suddenly I'm like, wow, there's, I could create a vision here. So I did. And I sat in the hotel room that night and I mapped out to find your vision, which is basically just a step-by-step -step process that helps people who have something big inside of them. Like, you know, it's a certain type of person that wants to go out. They feel they got something big inside of them just to work out who they are. And then from there, work out who their tribe is and then go out to essentially increase the vibrational frequency of humanity and the planet. So that's how Define Your Vision was born. What I love is that, you know, I, the part of your story that resonates with me really strongly is that I too had one of those battles, right? Where, you know, that moment and I had to kind of remap out my thing. And, and it really is about that sitting still for a second and saying, wait, I can't keep living someone else's life that's prescribed for me, but how can I live my own? And so that part of your story really, really resonates with me. Um, Andrea and Peggy, did you want to chime in on, um, on Lee's story? <laughs> like, wow. No, I just, um, I have wanted to hear when I, I think I saw during one of the conferences a little bit in your bio about the countries and how that all happened. So it was really riveting. I'm like, oh my God, then what happened? Then what happened? So undoubtedly there are books in there, uh, <laughs> right? Uh, in terms of, but I, not but, and like many people, that process uh, propelled you, I don't like the word push, but propelled you into the evolution of what you're doing now. And that is one of the things that I think is so amazing about the people we are meeting and journeying with right now, right? In terms of who we're interacting with through Mink Life and then through Tyson's group. And I just, I love how that helps you be the maverick that's leading the way with us on Clubhouse and all these other great things that you have us going through. So I see where that magnetic pull of propulsion comes from. Um, but I love that. And I just am grateful that we are connected. So. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Lee's probably our captain when it comes to navigating the waters of Clubhouse. So <laughs> it makes a lot more sense now, right? <laughs> Absolutely. I'm like, oh, now I see why he's like, come on, guys, we're going to do this. You're beating the drum. And we're like, look, look, I know me. I'm like, okay, I'll show up and see what happens. Because <laughs> I know. <laughs> One of the things that, that I feel too, you know, and this is part of the tough part about leadership as well sometimes is sometimes we can be a little bit too much as well. And this is something that I, you know, that we're constantly grabbing, grappling with as well. And I think um, like really coming back to the topic that we're talking about here is to, for us to be as leaders, I think I feel personally, it's so important to be vulnerable um, to show our tribe that we are making mistakes, that we have sabotaging patterns, that we have all, all these things, you know. And so um, sometimes I have to slow myself down a little bit, Andrea, like when I'm like, come on, guys, let's do this and let's do this and let's go that. And then all of a sudden there's just like this wake of bodies behind me sometimes when I look back and I'm like, OK, let's slow down, Lee, slow down. And you've got to kind of, you know what I mean, reassess a little bit every now and then. And I think it's important to share you know, those, those thoughts as you go through that, you're like, oh, I, did, I hope I didn't hurt, not hurt that person. Oh, no. you can't I mean, that I, I, mean I, I, I said it because I do understand now that energy that is bringing yeah. this to the fore yeah. in our clubhouse ex exploration, right? As we're all learning yeah. it. I think you've been really transparent and awesome in your leadership of getting us out there. Because I think for me, to sound and audio, I have been reluctant to be there because I listen so intently that it just takes over me, right? And so I'm not, I'm a less visual person. This is not as exhausting, but because I'm a high oral person, uh, Clubhouse, I can't do other things. People are like, oh, I was had it on, I was listening. I'm like, how do you do that? Because it's sound, right? And I just know that. The TV can be on, but I'm really focused because I'm not paying attention. So I have never um, 
I have loved that you've done this because it's made me go, I'm going to keep up as best I can and do what I can. Like, I, I, I hope I didn't make you think leaving dust. I'm like, well, you know, I just know where I am paddling along. No, <laughs> Happy no. to be like, oh, I'm in the wake. Okay. Woo. I roll. No, it's firstly, that's, that what I was saying is this has been my mindset mm -hmm. and sharing a little bit of my vulnerability yeah. of yeah. what I've been going through, Andrea, with everyone. And I'm like, just crashing my way through. And, you know, it's also when you, when you become a leader, like you guys are as well. Cropping down that rainforest. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly how I see it. I'm like, Oh, he's doing the rainforest thing. With us. I, I got an idea. Why don't we mod a room at some point together, Andrea, and we'll share a room together and we'll just moderate together and have some fun. And see what happens. I, you bet. I'll be there. I'll be your first mate. Is that what they say in nautical terms? Excellent. I'm sorry. <laughs> Peggy, Peggy, did you want to chime in on Lee's story and, and how did you feel about hearing his, his journey? Well, I love it. And something that um, I heard uh, this morning uh, in a clubhouse room, actually, in, in a discussion earlier this morning, and then I, I posted a quote, kind of my take on it, was that sometimes we get so focused on the end result that we forget to enjoy the process. And I think that was a really good good example. Lee's like, okay, I'm not enjoying the process. Like, I know that this would be the end result here, but I need to love what I'm doing right now. And let's see where loving the process will take me. And clearly it's literally taking you all over the world and all these amazing adventures. Um, but, you know, it's also taken you to found this amazing, you know, organization that's helping other people go. And I think when we, it goes straight back to what we were talking about before, when we're honest with ourselves, when we're true to ourselves. And, you know, then we're able to surround ourselves with people like this. I, that was an amazing story, by the way, Lee. Um, super crazy. I, I know that I, I tend to get focused on everything has to be perfect. Um, this is my reputation. I'm, you know, a business owner and, you know, I have to think of everything that the end result and what I've been working on lately is enjoying the process and just kind of being more flexible on letting things go. I, I, I'm, I'm amazed when I hear people that just like sell everything and like move somewhere. Um, I, I think in a small, in a small, small fraction, I've done that once or twice. I, but uh, not, not like just sold everything and got on a boat and <laughs> said, let's go. So I think, but because you were willing to enjoy the process and learn as you went, you, you know, had such great achievements. And I think that's a real testimony and that's really an amazing story. Can I just tune in to something for your audience here, um, Peggy and, and ladies, um, because you've brought up a really good point, Peggy. So, uh, it's, just, it's just something I innately had in me where I just, I get to a point with something and I just go, stuff it, I'm out of here. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm not happy here. And all of a sudden, I just, I, I just burn all the bridges and then I just go boom and I go, I'm going to do this now. And look, that's extreme. And I know that people have families and jobs and all the rest of it, right? That's, that's generally how it goes in the matrix. And I'm going to call it because that's what it is, right? So um, what I invite people to do and anybody that is watching this is just know, like almost, it's almost like giving people permission it's okay to change your mind and it's okay to pivot. If you hate your job, if you're in a toxic relationship, if you're living in a place that you can't stand, you do have options when you take responsibility for yourself and then go, oh, and suddenly you can kind of wake up a little bit and go, whoa, I'm actually not happy here. And it's almost like people just need someone else to let them know that it's okay to make that decision and then just take baby steps. It doesn't have to be this great big, sell the house, sell the kids, sell the whole lot and go and get a, a plane Don't ticket the kids. for Bahamas Don't and I say that. Wait a minute, is that an option? I'm wait, like, wait. Oh, kids. I wonder how much mine would fetch. Rent, rent them out for a little while. Go on a holiday. <laughs> Maybe take them on holiday with another yeah. person. Um, but, you know what I mean? but what I just, for people to understand that it's okay to make a decision to do something different just because you are where you are now. It doesn't mean you have to stay there. 
and just even if that that one thing that you've brought up Peggy could profoundly change lives for people just to realize that like I'm not actually happy here I need to do something different and move from problem aware into solution aware and start to looking for that and that's when people can start coming to uh, you know um, groups and communities like yourself like Mink Life to start making that decision to take control of their life again it's just the decision that's all it is it's a decision oh yeah the, the, decision, the decision we always say at Mink Life Motivation is when you decide to stop being pushed by the pain and start being pushed, pulled by the vision, right? It's right. that pain that's kicking you in the back and making you make decisions versus the, the vision of what you really want for yourself and actively taking those steps to get there. Um, so yeah, you beautifully summed it up. This is why, you know, you and I are like, you know, two peas in a pod, right? Uh, because we really do align um, philosophically um, in a lot of ways of how um, how it how it takes uh, in, you know I always say that you know each of our journeys there's nothing new in any of our journeys but it's our our expression of that new journey that is new and fresh um, and so you know that's why I love doing the entrepreneurial journey just in general is because uh, there are parts of your story that we all resonate with and they're probably not the same parts. <laughs> right? It's probably like all three of us have a different part of your story that's like, yeah, no, I see you. I was there. Uh, I, I did. I lived that life or um, I really wanted to do that and he took the courage and I didn't. So maybe maybe I want to. It, it, it lands on everybody so differently. And so um, that's one of the reasons why the oral history of people's lives and the building of tribe around story is so very important because of that reason, because it helps us all understand that we're connected. It helps us understand that we're not alone. It helps us understand that we're not crazy. I mean, we might be a little crazy, but we're not like completely crazy because the other people are also going through similar things. Um, and so again, thank you so much for being transparent and, and open and honest with us about your your journey and, and really kind of leading the way. Uh, and, you know, you say we're in the wake, but I feel like we are holding on really, really, we're holding on that back, the back of the boat and just being, we're, we're coming, we're coming anyway. So I don't feel at all that uh, we are, are at all just kind of being, um, you know, if anything, you are kind of creating the space where we can kind of float nicely behind the boat instead of kind of coming up against the waves. So thank exactly. you very much for sharing your story. So one of the things that we talk about on this, um, on this show every week is really kind of how we can keep networking. And uh, the reason why it's called keep networking is because sometimes we don't actually realize how um, the, the subject matter really relates to networking and connecting to other people. But this one in particular, this month in particular, is all about connecting to other people. And so the quote of the week that we are kind of sharing with you all is, we can achieve anything alone, but we can achieve everything together. And if I didn't say this myself, I would have definitely shared this, <laughs> this quote if someone else had said it, because this was literally the epitome of my own life this past year, where everything I wanted to achieve really worked out because I tapped into a tribe of people who also needed to achieve some things as well. And we worked together in order to get to make that happen. And so when we talk about a uh, tribe in Mink Life Motivation, we talk about it on the, on the terms of community, support, and connection. And how all three of those things need to be in place in order for you to actually consider this group of people that you are connected to as a tribe. And so the question that I have for my lovely motivators here is um, how do you how do you calibrate your your connections with your tribe? Like how do you stay connected with them? How do you keep growing in tribe uh, and being connected? Uh, and I will start with Peggy this time, so she got she gets to go last almost all the time. <laughs> Well, yay, nobody can take what I have to say. Um, <laughs> I don't have to sit there and go, okay, they just said that, now what do I have to say? So um, I'm a big, 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 big believer in communicating and staying connected, connected. And at the same time, it's probably something that I struggle with the most. Um, Monica and I um, work so well together because we can say, hey, 
next Tuesday at three o'clock, we have a meeting and we may not talk until Tuesday at three o'clock. And we know that we have a meeting at that time. And that's when we, we hang out. And, you know, I'm, some people are just really good at like texting good morning and all these like checking up on people and sending emails and birthday wishes. That's not where I'm strong at, but I, you know, I do my weekly show. I do this show. I do clubhouses, things that are scheduled and people know they can find me there. And also when somebody does reach out to me, I always make the time to reply. Even if the reply is I'm super busy right now. Why don't you call me tomorrow? Blah, blah, blah. Um, because I really feel like for me personally, I hate sending somebody an email or a text message and just crickets. I'm like, did they get it? Do I, do I reach out again? Like what? And so I think just, just really making yourself available, whatever that means to you. Like, I'm not the person that's going to send you an emoji three times a day to let you know that I'm thinking about you. I'm the one that's going to show up when you, when I told you I was going to be there and I'm going to do everything for you. And I think that we don't have to feel guilty if that's not our way of communicating. I have somebody that, you know, every two or three weeks sends me a, hi, how are you? And I think, ah, I should have reached out to her first because one time be the first person and I never am. Um, but whenever she does, I take the time to reply to her and let her know that I appreciate that. And same way with my clients. Um, you know, some people are great with the emails every week and this and that, but you know, find your way and be true to yourself. Don't, don't let what is popular and what everybody else is doing control your life because then it becomes something that is a struggle for you and it's not authentic. So just find your authentic place and, and be true to it and, and honor and respect the, your tribe and your community and, and do your part to reach out, but don't think it has to look like somebody else's. Part. Yeah, I, that really resonates with me because my husband is definitely that person of all of the holidays, sending the cards, handwritten, you know, personally addressed. And I'm like, oh, yeah, there's a holiday coming. I guess that would be novel to send someone a card for it, right? I'm like the opposite person. But on the other side, I am the person who will send you a random I love you text. Like, oh, you crossed my mind. I'm going to send you a text. I love you. I'm thinking about you. I don't want to have a conversation. I don't want to like <laughs> engage any further than this. I just needed you to know. So I always send, I love you. That is all. And then move on with my life. And, and that's just my, <laughs> my way of connecting with people. But I, I love that you kind of are sharing that, like, listen, everybody has different styles of, of that, and that is okay. Um, that's brilliant. Thank you so much for that, Peggy. Lee, did you want to kind of chime in on that? Yeah, I love what Peggy said there. Um, and, you know, it, <clears throat> excuse me, it's kind of, I'm, we're, I'm starting to scale a little bit in my business now. I'm starting to scale a lot in my business now. So where I used to be able to, respond to everyone it's like i've got major stuff going on i'm building major i i've i've just kind of and i'm doing it again and, and monica you know this you and i talk about this sort of thing the level of commitment that i'm doing and i'm i'm like i'm building this funnel here and i'm doing this and i'm creating this here and, I, and i'm doing this and i'm and i was working with a close friend of mine liz cole uh, about three days ago and she's just like lee do you realize what you're doing here? Most professionals aren't doing, and you've got this expectation that you're doing this. So there's this, I think you hit this tipping point a little bit where, I mean, that's my personality, obviously, but then all of a sudden, as my numbers scale as well, I get a lot of people that want to contact me, but it's literally, I don't have the bandwidth anymore as much as that I would love to so then all of a sudden, and this is for any leaders, whether you're in network marketing or whether, you, you know, like you can only reach so many people. So you have to develop some sort of filter at some point. You know what I mean? You do your best, um, but inevitably there is a little bit of, I'm finding that there is a little bit of fallout from that sometimes as well, which, you know, that's something that we don't want, but it's just not possible because I, I would end up doing 17, 18 hour days if I was to respond to every single person. Um, but I, I, so I love where Peggy's coming from um, in that point of view from, um, and something to, uh, as an addition to that, 
for me, I feel it's really important as a leader. So what I've done, and I love that you talk about systems. That, I think that's the great place. You tell someone where you're going to be and you're going to be there and you create that. If they want to be there, they can be there. Um, and there you go. That's, that's your space. That's how you can scale. So, um, and so for me, within those groups, I am all about leading by inspiration. And one of my big sayings is your kids don't do what you say, your kids do what you do. Okay, that's just a general principle across the board. So many people are not living their life in accordance with their own values. And they're trying to tell their kids to do this, this and this, but they're not doing it themselves. And mum, they're just looking back at mum and dad going, you're, you're a liar, really, essentially, if I was to really put it down. Um, and I think it's the same in leadership within your group. You've got to lead by example and inspire. You can't lead from a place where you're telling everybody to do what you do, but you're not doing it yourself. And so for me, it's all about rolling your sleeves up, getting down in the weeds with your people, being vulnerable, letting them know that you're not, you know, that you've got all this stuff going on in your head and that you, you know, that for me, the big thing that I have, so I've created within, so I've got define your vision is my group. That's my, my, my general group. But then I've got the people that have come through and really done the work and really committed. We've got what's called the diamond lounge. Now that is a place where I've how where I've got people and we've become family. And so I'll go in there and we are ridiculously transparent with each other. And so I'll go and do something and then I'll ask for their opinions on stuff. But as a leader, you've got to be able to, um, to um, um, receive constructive criticism and have a, have a, a filter there. And when yeah. you, and, and I think that's the best way for me that I love to build my tribe is to get in there with them and make the mistakes and ask them and then grow together and to show them that you're doing that. And, and it's like everything that I talk about in the Diamond Lounge, it's all about guys, this is the long-term game. We're playing the long-term game. We're not here to solve, pro like we're not here to create amazing businesses and tribes and all that within six months. It's not going to happen. It happens over years and we're going to make mistakes and we're going to have successes and we're going to have pains and tears and joys and celebrations together, but we just got to stick together long term. Sometimes we're going to have fallout with each other. Let's be yeah. honest with each other and call it for what it is. And I think that's so important to build. Yeah, I, 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 that was phenomenal. And, and I 100% I agree with, with all of that. And it, particularly the part about... Um, so when we're talking about building a tribe in, in, in our life calibrator, that is specifically what we're talking about. Like, how are you putting people around you to support your growth? One of the things you talked about, sometimes people will fall off and they won't be a part. And, and that is a part of growth in general. Uh, so one of the first things, that was one of the first lessons I learned when I was actually developing my own business was that the, my friends who were moms, and who were soccer moms and who were like all about chasing the kids around all day and having conversations about, you know, uh, what the kids are doing and wanting to sit around, you know, that's not me um, because what I'm focused on is my business. I'm focused on being a career woman and that wasn't me. And did I love them any less? No. What, did I think that they were um, beneath me? No, but just my, my, my need for attention, my need for conversation changed. And therefore my tribe needed to change with me. Um, and that continues to happen as you grow in your life. Uh, it, everyone's in your life for a season, but I just call them the collection of people that I've gathered along the way. And I still get an opportunity to kind of check in with them and check on their kids and check on what's happening with them. But I get to do it on a different, different set of terms. And I think um, when you were talking about tribe, that's what resonated with me. And I wanted to kind of really pull out is sometimes your tribe will change. All the time your tribe will change. You don't, you don't hang out with the same people you hung out with in first grade, right? You don't hang out with the same people in middle school that you hung out with in elementary school. You don't do that, especially in high school. Then when you go to college, you have a new set of friends. Then when you go to your new job, you have a new set of friends that changes and evolves every time. And I feel like sometimes people, when we go into entrepreneurship, we think, we're going to get everything we want and we're going to keep exactly the same people in exactly the same places to support us in exactly the same ways. And unfortunately, that's impossible 
because they have different needs and wants and desires and you have different wants, and needs and desires. And sometimes those don't cross pollinate. Um, and so Andrea, go ahead and bring this, this topic home for us. I, well, I, you took what I was gonna talk about in terms of the change of seasons, the change of people, and mm -hmm. that there's a fluidity that adds value regardless you know, like that, that those things have to happen to give you perspective when you're dealing with people and they're trying to make a change as all of us as entrepreneurs and as leaders, um, understanding this concept of people calibrating at different places in different times in their life and doing things there and being able to meet them there is one way of calibrating your tribe and giving them the space to know that it's okay if you're a soccer mom and you want to make a difference and you are building your life to do X with the kids, doable. Been there, done that, get it, here you see you. And so that is one way, like Peggy was saying, of being able to calibrate and maybe you're not present all the time, but you can say, I see you. And that just makes people feel heard and felt and, and understood. And mm -hmm. so that is, I think the way universally from what everybody else has said is really meeting people where they are and then hearing their dream or vision of where they might want to be as a leader and then helping them in their way get there. I mean, I look at that. That's my job as a health person when people come to me and they're like, no, we can't help me. And I'm like, OK, well, what do you think? I don't know. I want to do something I'm like great. That's what I need to hear to know that I can be that docent and that person that can take you to the next step. Because as long as you're willing, I will meet you wherever in this one aspect of life and leadership, and we'll figure out a way together. Sound good? You know, and that's really where most of us want to be. So I totally resonate with what Peggy and, and you said about remembering the cards and the things and getting over the fact that I'm not that person. And <laughs> I, it, it, that is one of those ways when people should know that but when you said when you get me and I'm there, I'm there with you. I promise to be present no matter what on a personal level. So I tell my kids that too. Yeah, your mom's everywhere, but when you put me right there in front of you, I will be there, and they know that. So that saves our relationship. Oh yeah, no, I I have had to let people know that the best way to contact me, please don't call me, which someone just tried to call me. Please don't call me, because you will never get me. But if you use my calendar link, you have my undivided attention for that amount of time on Zoom. And that is so true. My family doesn't even get to interrupt that time when I'm on Zoom with whoever it is because they took the time to find the space on my calendar and theirs. And it gives me the ability to be focused. So I, I, I know there probably is a little bit of like friend guilt, right? That happens when you're like growing in business and you're, you're becoming that busy person that you used to disdain when you weren't quite as busy. And you're like, uh, you think you're too good because you're always busier, right? But the reality is when you're really trying to birth the baby or birth the company or birth the birth of vision, it requires so much of you and your friends that you put in your tribe to support you in that space need to be able to understand that, which is why some of your friends don't get to stay in that space because they don't understand that. It doesn't, it doesn't resonate with what they need and what their wants are. And so then you can to lovingly love them from a distance, right? You get to lovingly say, I love you. I, I respect you enough to say that I can't give you what you're looking for. But what I can do is I can throw a brunch, which is what I used to do. So I would throw a brunch on Sundays once a month for any of my friends to hang out with me and day drink, right? And if you wanted to hang out with me, that was when you were gonna, ca you were gonna catch me at brunch. Cause otherwise I was in the middle of building a massive business and I was a bit in the middle of like really trying to do something bigger with my life. And so I'm not gonna be at your, your kids' birthday parties. I'm not gonna be at like, you know, just, oh, well, we're gonna get together and hang out at the park. I'm not gonna be at any of those things. But if you wanna hang out, let's have brunch every third Sunday. This is why I call it Created Mean Socialized Society, it was literally for this reason, so that I could day drink with my friends <laughs> once a month and get it in. So, uh, but that is exactly what it is about, you know, your tribe. You have to kind of cultivate them in order to support the life that you wanna live. So with that, I want to, um, I would like to uh, help us shed a little knowledge on um, 
the subject just a little further, I think. We'll see if I have another question here. If not, we can keep chatting. Oh, I do not have another question. Uh, the questions um, that I do have for the people who are watching and listening is if, you know, this show is about you and it's about what you want and what you want to talk to. And so we will we will talk till we're blue in the face to give you contacts and information and, and, and how you can be supported. But we really, 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 really want to hear from you and what what's on your mind and what, what questions or concerns you have about your business, your branding, your networking, um, or your business. And we're here to support you in that way. We are your tribe in exactly that way. So if you have any questions, please go to minklifemotivation.com forward slash live and drop a question and we would love to answer it live on the show um, and really just support you in what you're trying to achieve. So the next portion of our show in this particular portion of the show or this topic that we were talking about this week came from our Life Calibrator. And in Mink Life Motivation, the Life Calibrator covers the six key roles of your life. Um, as we alluded to earlier, we start with try, uh, we start with self. Uh, and we make sure that you are um, together in yourself. We help you align everything in your lifestyle to support who you really are. We help you identify what you're doing in your career to make sure you are using your talents, passions, and trainings in the most efficient way. We help you really kind of dive into your romantic partnerships and help you figure out what nurturing looks as a form of self-expression looks like to you. And then we pull together tribe. And I love this slide because we have been talking about, we've been on this show and we have covered every last one of these topics this, this past year, right? And so this is literally the last Life Calibrator uh, um, show uh, before we go into the new round of doing it all over again and having different conversations about all of these things. But if this is something, an area that you wanted to do a little bit of a deeper dive in, we have the Life Calibrator and the Life Calibrator really is designed to help you take a deeper dive in here. You can create habits that support your own personal and business growth. You can build stronger, authentic, mutual, beneficial relationships, both in life and in business. And as you can see, from the conversation today, it is so uber important to do that. Uh, we help you create a, a strategy that supports your life and business optimization. We help you create a balanced and organized time management system, and we help you align your vision to your um, align your actions to your visions to maximize your resources. So, if you are interested in learning more about Mink Life Motivation or this topic itself, please go to Mink Life Motivation and type in complimentary or just push the button next to me going welcome and you can take some classes for free so with that it is time for announcements 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 and i would love to hear what my motivators are up to in your tribes right now so we will start with our guest lee what is happening in your tribe and how can we connect with you I am really excited, Monica, because I've been building the foundations of Define Your Vision now for um, about a year and a half. And it started really small, just myself posting in a group every day. I was the only one posting and I had like 20 people, you know, and all of a sudden um, I, 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 it, 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 it started to grow. And then I went into um, uh, a challenge model and I couldn't, I had this this course and I realized that um, I, I couldn't deliver it. And so I went and invested in this challenge model on how to run challenges. Literally, it cost me $10,000 to, to work out this challenge model. And now, and I've adopted that model and it's perfect for what I want to deliver. So we've actually got a five day challenge coming up on March 15th over in the States, which is March 16th here in Australia. And yeah, basically we're starting from zero where we come back and we really help people to work out. We ask the tough questions. We start all, I'm gonna be completely transparent. When people come in, we build the vision of what it can look like. And then we roll up our sleeves and we get down and we ask the real questions. We start working out what, where are you lying to yourself? Where, where do you need to set boundaries in your life? What's going to happen when you do that? What fallout is going to be there? How can we support you through that? Um, and so that's the next stepping stone. So that's the heartbeat of the Find Your Vision is around our challenges. 
because that's where we help people to really just start to ask themselves the right questions. And I love what Andrea was saying before, you know, it's all about asking questions about your, the people that are in your circles, like, where are you at? And it's all about timing. You know, if they're ready to, to step up and do something great, if not, we can nurture them and, and, and just wait for them to, but the ones that are ready, I, I can pick it straight away. I can tell straight away. It's energy, it's language. They're in everything they want to go. And that's where we focus our attention. And in the challenge, it's really, honestly, it's a filter. And we come through and we see these people and then we support and rally around these people. And then we see them. We see everyone, but we see them. We believe them. We support them. We contact them with everyone that we can um, and move forward. So we, yeah, we've got the I am due for a breakthrough five day challenge coming up at www.iamdueforabreakthrough.com. Um, I'm super excited to just make this happen and really connect with people and hear people and see people. Awesome. Very good. So uh, I believe on, um, Alana has put that in the in the chat and also it's in the body of this of this description of this this live. So Feel free to use that link and connect with Lee. Uh, uh, let's have Peggy go next. Peggy, what's going on? I finally have my new redesigned website up and live. So I would love if all of you guys did me a huge favor and went to headshotsbypeggy.com and checked it out and give me some feedback. What do you think? Is it easier to maneuver? Um, is there any questions? Is there anything that I left out that I should add? So go check out my website and let me know what you think about it. Um, and let me know if you find something in there that's interesting and that you have a question about, or if you're like, geez, Peggy, you just talk a lot, even in your website. It could be. <laughs> yep. The rude remarks. I always ask for them. They're the best. All right, Andrea, what's going on? Oh gosh, that's so funny. Well, um, I am starting next round of my detoxification rejuvenation cleanse on March the 18th. So if you want to get more information and see how it's not just about food, it's about your mind, body, and spirit. So you don't say, oh, I'll sign up for that and think, oh, I'm going to get all this food stuff. You're going to get plenty of food stuff, but you're really going to lean into who you are so that you can make change sort of lasting and sustainable. And um, there's a link, it's bit.ly forward slash y underscore detox. And I'll be there, pick a date and time to come learn more. And hopefully you'll join us for March 18th. Nice. And of course, you know, I mean, Life Motivation, we are always doing crazy stuff. So uh, the first thing is embody to change, embody change to thrive. Now, I don't know about you, but I've had to change a lot over the last year, uh, seeing as how I had no intention of doing any conferences ever. It was not a part of my business plan, but the coronavirus has decided for me that there were things that I need to do. So with that, we are learning to embrace this by embodying the change so that we can thrive. We're gonna do this over two days, covering six sessions with 24 topics in two cities in life, business, branding, and networking, both in Sydney and in Los Angeles. And that is super exciting. I believe tickets go on sale on Friday. I'm so stoked for that. Uh, but we are still looking for speakers. So if you are a dynamic speaker, and you want to lend your voice to why it is so important to embody change to thrive, come through. Also on Friday, on Thursday, we have at 6 a.m., we have our Power Partner Mixer. If you're curious about what this mean life motivation is and why people keep saying it or why they're like, yeah, the community, the universe, just because there's a lot going on over here. And we would like to share with you what that is. But we also want to know what the heck do you do? Tell us so we can support you in that. So come meet, share, and learn at the Power Partner Mastermind Mixer on Thursday at 6 a.m. You heard it, 6 a.m. Right uh, in, I believe, on Mink Life Motivation. You can actually get the link for that. Next week, we will be diving into uh, determining your blueprint. And with that, because we are way out of time, uh, I am so excited to get to my favorite slide of the entire thing, which is the credits. Uh, so thank you to Alana for being the most amazing producer and my co-host and Lee Hicks for sure. Thank you for gracing us with your presence. Remember that you have the act, you have the power to activate the vision within. And also remember that sharing 
is caring. So hit the share button, message this to someone, say, hey, have you seen Mink Life Motivation Live? They talk about some crazy stuff there and they're all kooky and they're loud and it's Monday, but it's fun, you should try it. Share this video with anybody you think who could use the information that we shared today. And with that, we bid you adieu. Thank you so, so much for being a part of our community, for being a part of our tribe and supporting us as we continue to try to support you in the many ways we can. See you all next Monday. Bye.